Okay. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Ken Shibusawa, and, and thank you very much for the very large uh, attendance today. A um, lot, lot of distinguished guests today, um, and thank you very much for giving the opportunity to speak. Um, it's great to be back in Southern California. Um, actually, I went to uh, business school at UCLA back in 86, 87, and so it's, 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 like, it's like coming home back home. Um, and another coincidence is that my wife um, was actually uh, not made in Japan, but she was made in actually in Glendale. <laughs> she was born in Glendale and, and, and until two years old, uh, she was in Glendale. And, and she gave me the address um, of where she used to live. And you know, thanks to Google Map, um, 815 East Maple Street. <laughs> And the same apartment was still there, and, and there, was a, there was a black and white photo of my, my wife when she was a little baby, and, and the same pool was actually <laughs> still, was, was still there. So uh, I'm very, very thrilled to be here with you today, and, 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 and the honor to be um, with you. Um, this gentleman, uh, you probably met, be, my, met before, and I, I haven't met him either, but um, this is my uh, grandfather's grandfather, Eiichi Shibusawa. He passed away in 1931. Um, I was born in 1961, so there's a 30-year 30, 30 gap. Um, he's known as the father of Japanese capitalism because he was involved in starting 500 companies, and as Vicken mentioned, 600 uh, social um, and welfare uh, enterprises. Um, this is, H, this is the H. Shibusawa that most people actually see as an old man, but actually he used to be young. <laughs> and and he, lo he looked like this back, this was like, I think he was like 26, 27 years old. Uh, and, and this is when he had the opportunity to travel to Paris for the uh, exposition um, in 1867, 68, and the transformation. And so this was the era when Japan was emerging from a feudal state to the modernization. He sent this picture to his wife in Japan, and she got really mad. <laughs> and said, "What did you do with your hair?" You know, and so and there's actually a letter um, at the Memorial Foundation. Uh, there's, an, there's an archive um, of him explaining <laughs> to his wife why he did this. And so, <clears throat> so he was a great man, but there's always the better half, right? That's always, <laughs> and that things doesn't change. Um, so anyway. Um, and let me share with you a little bit about uh, some origins. <coughs> origins um, in Japan. May maybe some of you have been there, um, but Tokyo Chuoku Nihonbashi Kabuto Cho Four Three. Um, and if you go to this address right now, there's a there's a nondescript sort of regular building that stands there. But on the corner, there's a plate <coughs> um, there, and it says something like this uh, in Japanese, obviously. But it says the bank's birthplace. Um, the same exact space uh, about 145 years ago, <clears throat> um, this was the, uh, the building that stood there. This is the first National Bank of Japan, uh, which my great-great-grandfather was credited for establishing. Um, we don't look very much alike, um, but my sister looks like this, <laughs> so, and so I think, I think we're related. Um, um, so, but he kind of had a problem because like, a, a, you know, a bank didn't exist back those days. And so if you think about it, it was a startup venture business. And so to explain what a bank was to the Japanese society, um, he said something like this. Um, he said the bank <coughs> is like a mighty river. Um, a money that doesn't gather there is merely a puddle of water or dripping dewdrop. Um, so even though it has the ability to bring wealth to the people um, in the nation, its effects are unrealized. And so basically, you know, uh, um, it's Money is a very important resource, but if it's just dripping, it has not much power behind it. Um, but if you gather and if it starts to flow like a large river, um, then obviously there's a lot of there's power behind it, and that's basically was the led to the modernization of, of Japan. And so when you hear the word uh, capitalist or capitalism in, in the sort of modern era, usually we don't have a sort of a positive s spin on it. You know, you kind of imagine the have and the have-nots, the one percent and, the and the, that kind of. Um, but he, he kind of had a different sort of notion of what a capitalist <clears throat> or, or, or what the importance of capitalism to the modernization of a society. Um, so, but if you think about it, uh, how does a how do, how does you know dew drops that sh that are dropping all over the place, and how do how do you how does that gather together, and um, and basically, um, I think you need some um, in Japanese we call it kyokan, um, but in English you can uh, uh, 
probably translated in, in common values. Common va values that are shared by people, and if it's shared by people, uh, they come together. And so tonight, uh, we all gather together for some common value values, and that's why we had a you know, busy schedule, but we gathered here today. Um, a, a money gathers at a bank because, because we want to put our money in a safe place. That's why it gathers at a bank. I used to work for a hedge fund. Uh, money that gathered there was you know, for rich people that want to get richer, right? <laughs> um, but, but you needed some common values to bring sort of these uh, uh, you know, the dew drops together. Um, but if it gathers together, though, um, there's strengths and weaknesses <clears throat> and, and, and things like that. And so I think you need uh, mutual engagement to, to, to help one another. Um, and if you think about it, this common values and mutual engagement, in a sense, it kind of that's what kind of makes us human, in a sense, right? And this is, I think we mentioned the word humanity. We think about what humanity is all about, and I think we all share some common values, whether as Vikin said, if you're a Buddhist or Christian or Islam or, or whatever, there, there, there's, there, there are some common values. Um, and then if you're able to you have mutual engagement, then that, that's, how, that's how you build a society. Um, and once you do that, well, we can, we can co-create, have the co-creation. And, and, and so my great-grandfather's vision about bringing capitalism into Japan was, was to bring wealth and bring and, you know, pro, uh, power to the nation, but he wanted to do this through what it says, gappon. <clears throat> gappon in Japanese kind of means to, like, it's like um, unity is the word I think uh, they can use. It's a kind of unity of these kind of engagements. And so, so it wasn't just about making the money <clears throat> for him as a capitalist. And so um, he, um, this is the first bank in Japan, right, the first venture. Um, but he also is, is involved in, in many other enterprises. Um, he established the first, I guess in a sense, large-scale manufacturing. This is the OG paper, which he introduced uh, Western um, uh, manufacturing know-how in, into Japan for, for Westernized uh, paper manufacturing. He also introduced the first insurance company uh, in Japan. Um, and also a shipping company that he merged with his, they usually called him the arc rivals, Mr. Iwasaki of the Mitsubishi. Uh, <clears throat> um, but they actually, um, they, these two companies eventually merged into a shipping company. Um, the first gas company, uh, the first, um, this was, I think was the first, it was a textile company. Um, Beer. He liked beer, I guess. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of beer companies. And if you travel to Japan, um, there's a hotel called the Imperial Hotel in central Tokyo, and he was involved in establishing that. And he was also involved in establishing the Tokyo Stock Exchange uh, in Japan. And so about 500 sort of business-related enterprises. But other than that, universities such as Hitotsubashi University. He was also a champion of women's education um, back in about 100 years ago. Um, and uh, he also established the Japan Chamber of Commerce in Japan, um, hospitals, the JK Hospital. He was involved in the Red Cross in Japan. Um, Yoi Queen, actually, he was the uh, sort of the head of this you know, organization until he'd passed away in 1931. Um, but back in 100, 150 years ago, uh, in, in, even in central Tokyo, there were, there were actually street children, homeless. Um, so th this was a, a facility for the underprivileged. Um, he was also a, a champion of the U.S.-Japan relations. So he came to Japan um, uh, four times. First, uh, first was in 1902, 1909, and 1910s, and then last 1926, which was uh, five years before he passed away at the age of 91. So he was pretty old, actually, when he came. And he didn't get to travel first class in an airplane because airplane didn't exist. And he had to take a ship. And so uh, it, was a, it was a sort of physical toll. But he felt that establishing Japan and U.S. relationship was a very important uh, effort. The picture here, actually, is a very uh, famous um, um, uh, uh, project that he was involved in, it was it was sending dolls as ambassadors, and so from the United States they sent blue-eyed dolls to Japan. Um, from Japan they sent these uh, Japanese kimono dolls to the United States as ambassadors. They, apparently they was they even pa carried a passport. I don't know if it was it's issued by the consulate, but um, <laughs> but um, but there was that kind of exchange. Um, and then, as Vikin got in, in, in detail, he was involved in the Armenian uh, uh, Relief Society. Um, 
I don't have much data as like 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 Vicken, but <clears throat> but th this is a English paper that that I, that I found, and there's an article here that that says basically like this. It says the relief committee uh, entertains press. Um, basically, it was basically um, advocating that more Japanese people know about this tragedy in Armenia. Uh, um, so basically, it was he invited the press, <clears throat> you know, and to make sure that they knew what was going on and, and, and to, to engage the Japanese society. So his thing was not, I mean, he obviously had a little bit of money, so he could, he could donate, um, but it was more like a seed, seed capital because he was basically like a venture capitalist. So, and so basically, he puts up a little money uh, and then he engages a lot of people, and that was the dropping dew drop, and then it becomes one, one mighty river. Um, as uh, um, I can mention, he, you know, he was the a student of uh, Confucius. Um, in the United States, you think of Confucius as something in a Chinese <laughs> a cookie, but, but it basically it, it represents virtue. Um, and then the Soroban, which is the first handheld calculator, basically, um, and it represents business, and then that this should be in sync. And, and his thinking was that uh, Longo, the teachings of Confucius and, 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 uh, and the Abaca Soroban, together, why, why does that need to go together? Um, basically, he's just saying, this is uh, from his uh, teachings, basically his top management may become very wealthy individually, um, but if most of that society are suffers in poverty, then his own um, happiness will not last. Um, he also says, said something like this, if that wealth is not achieved through the right way of doing things, uh, then, then that wealth cannot last. And that's why it's so important for us today to make efforts to merge Longo and Soroban, uh, which even, you know, obviously in back those days, it seems so far apart. And, and so for my interpretation of, of his way of thinking in, in today's language is basically it's all about sustainability. Um, how, do you, how do you have a sustainable society into the future? And, and part of that equation is, I think, inclusion, um, which obviously is a very big um, topic today. And so in, in today's society, we think about the digital economy. And, and digital basically says it, it, zero or, or one, basically, right? It, black or white. And it's, a, it's an important way of looking at it. But his way of thinking, as i thinking, is more about the power of and. Uh, which is not, it's not the, always the easiest answer, because um, it's not so clear. Uh, but from this power of end, that's, that's where you get the innovation. Um, that's where you get the new creativity and sustainability into the future. So in closing, though, I kind of wanted to share with you this picture. I mean, sometimes we wake up in the morning, and it, it kind of feels like this. It, it's, it's like this. It's like, it's like this upward climb, endless climb, right? And you look around, the rocks everywhere, right? Kind of feels that way, right? Um, so, but this very same sort of um, 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 existence, <clears throat> if you actually look at it from a different perspective, you see a different picture. Um, if you look at it closely, all you see is a hill, <clears throat> endless hill, and all you see is rocks. Um, but if you look at it from a different angle, you see this. Um, that, that was actually Mount Fuji, um, um, and which is very symmetrical, right? But if you think about it, if you look at it in a different times of the day, um, if you look at it at a different season, um, you know, you, you, you see you see different perspectives, <clears throat> a new new sort of um, vision, um, and and this is a very um, important message that actually was taught to me uh, by a Chinese student about, about 10 years ago. Um, I started helping out this um, um, project called the Jing Forum, uh, which was a forum of students that started in 2006, so about 12 years ago. Um, there's this University, uh, University of Tokyo co-ed girl, and there's this Beijing guy. Um, and back in 2006, Japan and China was, had it, had it, kind of went through a rough spot. And they basically said, we can't leave it up to adults anymore, right? <laughs> so so we, we're going to change. <clears throat> and so this kind of started, um, and it's been going on every year. Um, about the second year, uh, I remember the, the leader of the Chinese delegation, they came to Japan, had some discussions. 
And he made, a, he made a, a statement that really left an impression on me. He said, history is like a mountain. It never changes. But, he added, but if you look at the mountain from this side and the other side, you see a different picture. I mean, even Mount Fuji, which is very symmetrical, if you look from the different sides, you kind of see a different mountain. History is never symmetrical. So if you look at it from the different sides, you see a different picture. It's the same thing. And so what he was saying is maybe sometimes we need to go on the other side of the mountain and to see what it looks like. And, and I thought that was a very, very powerful statement that, that was sent to me by, by somebody like, you know, very, very younger than me. And, um, but uh, um, sometimes we forget because our daily lives, we only, only see rocks and rocks and an upward climb. But if you think about it in a different perspective, in a sense, you know, we don't live in a bad world after all. I, mean, I, I get to come to Southern California uh, because we live in a world that allows me to do that, to spend time with you. And so um, I really wanted to appreciate um, the opportunity um, to be here today with you, all the delegates, uh, the distinguished guests, the Council General, um, especially the Vikan, for, for finding, finding this um, wonderful story, which I did, I did not know until six months ago. And so if it wasn't for Vikan, I wouldn't be here <laughs> with you today. And especially, I wanted to thank Vikan for, for, for his, his fine work. So I wanted to applaud Vikan one more time for his fine work. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And, and please, um, if you're ever in Tokyo, I would love to uh, take, take you to see Mount Fuji. So see you then. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ken. And thank you for an excellent uh, summary of the incredible things your great-great-grandfather accomplished and the philosophy that made that possible. And then the last story, and I, I like that photo, so we're going to leave it up. Um, before we start Q&A, one last reminder to write your questions on the card, and hopefully lots of you have written them. Otherwise, I'm going to have to tap dance up here. Um, before we move on to Q&A, there's going to be a brief but important comments from the ANCA. Please welcome Mr. Maurice Masak-Kaleshian to the podium.